Okay, 5.3, take another spin. <clears throat> the trapezoid shown below is revolved about the y-axis, the form of frustrum. Um, a frustrum um, is the bottom slice of a cone or a pyramid too, actually. So what we're supposed to do here is we're supposed to rotate this around the y-axis. So it is going to come on over here. Go ahead and draw along with me, please. And here. And here. And I'll kind of come up like that. That's not very good. It's a little bit better. Okay, kind of like this. So it's the bottom part of a cone. So it's missing, it's like cone hat, whatever that might be. And that is what a frustrum is. Again, the base doesn't have to be circular. It could also be um, a pyramid. So it could also have a prism <clears throat> serving as a base. Number one, draw a sketch of a three-dimensional object. Sorry, we already did that. Number two, find the volume of an object formed. Okay, um, we have to find the volume of the frustrum. So, um, I already have this written on here from last class, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to find the volume of the whole big cone, and then we're going to subtract this part that was removed, just think that we cut it off, and then that will leave us with the area, or no, I'm sorry, that will leave us with the volume of the frustrum. So, first thing we got to do is find the um, volume of the big cone. You might pause the video here and talk about how you might do that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the height of this cone, this cone that was cut off. So, if you look here, we can see that this has a slope of 2. And if this is a straight line, that's going to continue upward. Now, the graph cuts off and probably intentionally, so you're, you have to think about it a little bit instead of just count blocks, but it's gonna look something like that. So right now, <clears throat> this is the way that I would think about it is, right now, um, the big cone, so the big cone, I might keep track of this over here, the big cone has a radius of eight. And I see here that every time I go over 1 on the x-axis, I'm going up 2 on the y-axis. So if I go over 1 8 times, it's 8 times 2, which means the top point of my little wizard hat cone is going to be 16. So I'm going to have a height of 16. Okay. So that's some stuff you could use to get the volume of the big cone. And then um, you also have to subtract um, the missing cone part. So um, the missing cone, I'm going to do here, missing cone. So what are its dimensions? Well, it has a different radius. As you can see, this is the radius of the missing cone, which has been reduced by 1 to 7. And what's its height? Well, its height would be this distance here. And remember, the whole thing is 16, but now we're missing these two that are part of the frustrum. So its height is 14. So I have the formula for the volume of a cone right here. So I'm going to write this out as volume is equal to pi big cone times the radius, 8 squared, times the height of 16. And you guys might pause it and try the rest on your own, see if you can get the answer in terms of pi, and then roll a video. And then we're going to subtract uh, the part of the missing cone, so the volume for that would be pi, times the radius of 7 squared, times the height of 14. So, uh, this is going to give me Volume equals, let me get my calculator, 8 times 8 times 16 is 64 times 16, which is 1024 pi. 
and then the other one is 7 times 7 times 14, which is 686 pi. And then you subtract those, and 1024 minus 686 is 338 pi. Now, you probably already know this, but this formula is divided by 3. I just didn't keep track of that as we were going along, and I just tacked it on at the end like this. But technically, these are all over 3 as well because it's a cone. And remember, the cone you have to divide by 3. So um, that is the end of number 2. So let's go on to problem number 3, which is our main problem uh, for the day. Go ahead and read it. And as you guys are doing that, um, I'm actually going to pull up the answer key just so I can kind of check our work as we go along. But I do remember 338 pi is correct, over 3. Okay, so what we're doing is we're trying to find the volume of this shape. It's going to be a little hard for me to help you too much with this from home because I had some neat visuals in the room that I was hoping to like pull up and, and illustrate this for you, but I hope that you guys can still manage to have a, a pretty good discussion about it there in class. But um, they want you to draw line segments around this three-dimensional flower vase so it's presented in 2D because right now we are looking at the, the cross section of the shape actually. So um, if I were to just give a rough estimate of this volume, you know, I would go like this, and I would go like this, and I would go like this, and then that would be kind of close. But maybe think about why this wouldn't be close and talk about that. Well, the reason why it wouldn't be close is that these are these these parts would be counted. They're no good, right? That would, that would leave me with too much, too much volume, okay? And keep in mind, this thing is 3D as well. So you wanna think about like what that would look like if it was 3D, because it's not a rectangle, okay? Uh, pause the video, actually, and some of you will get it and some of you won't. Um, what is this shape? The way that I have it drawn, not the vase, but just the green outline I have there. What is that a cross section of? Well, that is a cross section of a cylinder, believe it or not. And that's kind of weird to think about, but it would kind of look like this. So if I were to get the volume of this, what would I do? Well, it'd be the area of the base. So I got like a radius of four and I'd multiply by the height and I think that that's 10, okay? And I'd plug the numbers in and, and I'd be done. And I have a fair, a fair estimate of what the volume of this flower base would be. But again, it would be too large. Okay, so I'm gonna erase the way that I did at that time. And uh, we're going to end up drawing on this a few times, so it's actually good we're doing this on the computers. So this one's going to take a while, but it is not quite the main problem of the day, okay? But make sure to write it all down. We are going to erase it, but still, don't let that stop you from writing it down. It's real important, okay? So what I want to do is I want to draw the lines kind of in a different way. So I want to start out by connecting those two there. So that kind of looks like that, okay? And then connect that, connect that. It's looking like a fish. And then we're gonna connect through, let's see. We're gonna go up like this, over like this, down to here, and there, and then down to this and this. Okay. Once everybody has it drawn, talk about what you would do to get the volume of the shapes that I've drawn. 
which would be a pretty good estimate of our face. What would these be in 3D? And how would we find their volumes? Okay. Well, we've divided it into two three-dimensional shapes. So number one is a frustrum from problem number one. A frustrum. And shape number two is another cylinder. So what I want you to do is I want you to work towards getting the answer to this in terms of pi. And it all just involves using um, the cylinder area, which is the area of the base. So the base is a circle times the height. So that's what you'll do for the cylinder. And then you'll do for the, uh, for the cone, well, what is that? Um, you'll do the same thing. Now remember, it has a, it has a circular base too, this, this frustrum does. Okay, so be careful. So you're gonna have to divide your answers by three for the volume of that one. Okay, and someone actually, maybe before you guys start, someone drew a really cool picture of this. Uh, let's see here, that was actually it. Uh, the other day, this one, I thought that was pretty neat, and, oops, oh shoot, there's the answer, but, um, hopefully that wasn't up there too long, but do try to calculate it on your own now, and make sure that you have all your, your shown work, so don't just write down what the answer is, if you did happen to see it there, start from scratch, work towards getting the frustrum volume, and the cylinder volume, and then the total volume, so you would really need both these answers you know, to get the problem correct. So pause the video now and give that a shot. Okay, so as we saw before, the answer to this problem was 140 pi. And if you guys struggled getting that, maybe have someone share that did get 140 pi. And if you guys really aren't understanding, I can do this one when we get back as well. Okay, go ahead and erase that. Here's the main problem of the day. So now, I want us to think about this problem another way. So, we want to be even more precise. So this time, draw lines here, 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 here. We're gonna get real precise with this one, like that. Oh no, that, not that one. see we're getting pretty precise with this one so um, it divides it into eight regions or sweet hold on it's eight or six six regions excuse me okay so you got to find the volume of each of them and add them together for a final answer right? that's the challenge of the day if you want to work with a partner on this, I'm okay with that. But your final answer needs to be correct. So, what is the first shape? It is a, well, maybe actually pause the video and write down what you think the six shapes are. Well, the first shape is a frustrum. Shape two is a cylinder. Three is a frustrum. Four is a cylinder. And five and six are both frustrums. Okay. So you want to get an answer for each one of them, and then the sum of them in terms of pi, or actually the answer will be in a decimal as well. Um, check it at the end, okay? And what I would also recommend doing is the substitute will have an answer for each of the areas as well. So if you go up and you say, hey, can I check my answer for four, you can check the answer for four, for five, you can check it for five, and then hopefully we can work towards getting this answer here. And then after that, um, all you have to do is do the ready, 
and then the graphs will be due next time. Okay, so the rational function, you can get that out, and please work on that, the rational function graphs, and I hope that you guys have a good day, please.